passions. Uh, now, uh, 8A, we already heard. 8B, uh, Mr. Bobby Cutler, the Mason County Heritage Center at the Historic Cowboy School. Well, after John Butler, I don't know if I need to go or not. Uh, but, but I spent a long time on this, so I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I want to thank all my Cowie buddies that stuck it out. It's, appreciate you being here. I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to speak this evening about your Macon County Heritage Center at the Historic Cowie School. And I want to thank you for your continued support of this project. Six years ago, there was a meeting held at the Boiler Room Steakhouse with nearly all the Macon County Heritage Preservation Groups in attendance. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the future of Cowie School. How would it be used when it stopped serving the county as an active elementary school? In 2010, there was a three-day meeting so the public could give input on how they thought the school should be used. And then about two and a half years ago, this Board of Commissioners selected a group of citizens and charged them with carrying out the vision that had been set forth at those meetings. Tonight, we are proud to show you the progress that has been made so far and discuss where we hope to go in the future. The three key principles of the mission statement shown here have guided our efforts as a board. We believe we have remained true to this mission, and we'd like to share some of the highlights of those efforts now. The first piece of good news is that all our rooms are in use, either by rent-paying tenants or our community partners. Our paying tenants include two artist studios, Cowie Textiles, the Cowie Pottery School, the Easter Band of the Cherokee, and the Cowie Genealogy Resource Group. Additionally, the Macon County Historical Society and the Cowie Community Development Organization also occupy rooms. While, this latter group pays no, while these latter groups pay no rent, they provide volunteers and in-kind services to support the functions of the center. We have several groups who use the other parts of the facility on a recurring basis, and I'll describe that later. The Heritage Center also hosts two major events annually, one in August and one at Christmas, as well as our summer concert series. Let's take a look a little bit closer at some of our tenants. Cynthia Kennard and John Holden both operate working art studios, as you know, at the school, creating, displaying, and selling their artwork. Both are keeping regular office hours, and by their estimates, several hundred folks have passed through their studios over the past year. Additionally, John Holden offers painting lessons at the school and is taught and is teaching, and you've heard this before, students from both Macon and surrounding counties, as well as students from as far away as Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Coming soon, we hope, John's daughter will be teaching a painting class for children. We're very happy to have these fine artists at the Heritage Center. Cowie Textiles, operated by Teresa Bouchonet, was our first paying tenant, providing instruction in the restoration of damaged woven fabric. Teresa offers classes in weaving and quilting in support of our mission to foster traditional mountain crafts and heritage. Cowie Textiles, always a popular stop for visitors, especially during concerts and the celebration, has welcomed over 1,500 guests since opening in 2013. Cowie Pottery is one of our newest and most active tenants. Equipped with kilns and all the equipment necessary for creating pottery from the ground up, no pun intended, <laughs> Doug Hubbs, Hank Schuler, Maria Green, and the Cowie Potters offer a regular series of weekday classes for adults and children. We anticipate that soon evening classes may be available to serve the working public. The Cowie Pottery School has been operating for just over six months, but it currently serves 45 students and has been visited by more than a couple of hundred people in that time. We're thrilled to have Cowie Pottery up and running and are very proud of the wonderful products made by potters of all ages. The Eastern Band has been extremely supportive of our efforts to promote the history of the Cherokee in the Cowie region of Macon County. They have provided craftsmen and storytellers for our annual celebration. Future plans include the utilization of our new outdoor fire pit in conjunction with Cowie Pottery to demonstrate and teach traditional Cherokee pottery techniques. We've also fostered a partnership with the Macon County Historical Museum. The museum has been a key partner in providing volunteer hours, displays, demonstrations for events at the center. Additionally, the museum has transferred their genealogy information to the school for use by our resource group in genealogy. Several groups make use of the Heritage Center rooms for recurring events. The gym and the CCDO room are often home to an exercise class that meets three times a week at the center. One Saturday each month, the Southeastern Bluegrass Association sponsors a jam session held in various rooms throughout the center. Supporting bluegrass and traditional music is a major goal of the center, and the SEBA sessions, now having 40 musicians and growing, contribute significantly to the achievement of that goal. In fact, they're not able to meet in one room anymore. They're having to go to two or three at the same time, so they're growing rapidly. 
Cali Farmers Market is open every Tuesday from May through October, offering local fruits and vegetables, mountain crafts, and entertainment by local musicians. In addition to being one of the most popular events at the center, 1,500 to 2,000 people per season, the Farmers Market is also one of the fastest growing. The number of vendors that have signed up for the market has doubled between last year and this year. We anticipate another outstanding season for the market this year. Mm -hmm. The first of our two major festivals is the Cowie School Celebration. Held each year in August, heritage and tradition are celebrated at all corners of the property. With music, quilting displays, antique cars, mountain crafts, sheep herding exhibitions, and other heritage demonstrations, and always plenty of food, the Cowie Celebration is a fun day for the entire family. We expect this year's celebration will be bigger and better than ever, so circle your calendars on August 15th and join us for the third annual Cowie School Celebration. Our other annual festival is Cowie Christmas. Last year was our first involvement in this event, and it was an unbelievable success. Local crafts were on display and on sale for Christmas. There were special areas in the gym and pottery school where children of all ages could make their own Christmas decorations. Food was provided in the cafeteria by Chef Jerry Pfeiffer of Jerry's Kitchen. Cowie Christmas drew one of the largest crowds for any event at the Heritage Center, and it was a wonderful experience for all those who attended but it's these attendees that made it such a successful and memorable event. Make your plans to attend this year's event on December 4th from 9 to 4 at the Cowie School. Engineered by Barry Clinton and Tommy Jenkins, the Heritage Music Center series, the Heritage Center Music Series, has become one of the most popular and highly anticipated events at the Cowie School. It started on a rainy afternoon in 2013 with an amazing concert by Balsam Range. In spite of the weather, it was a tremendous show, and from it, the music series was born and quickly expanded. From the showmanship of Buncombe Turnpike, the incredible fiddle playing of Michael Cleveland, the gospel sounds of Mountain Faith, or Red June's amazing vocal harmonies, once a month, from May to October, the old gymnasium is magically transformed into a music venue worthy of these talented performers. Between these events and the outstanding efforts of our tenants, we estimate that between five and 6,000 people have used or visited the Heritage Center in the past year. And it's significant to note that that does not include the recreational use of the field, walking track, or playground. Now, I'd be remiss, having gone through the Heritage Music Center, if I didn't let you know that I will offer to all of you a special deal tonight. <laughs> Normally, our season's tickets for six concerts cost $75. I will sell them to you for $12.50 a concert. So they're available to you tonight. I've got them. Great. You're not supposed to do the math. But anyway, uh, that is a that is by the way a significant savings off of off of the ticket price if you come to each one. I've got them. You owe me already. Anybody else that wants one, I've got them in my pocket. Okay. No Heritage Center events will be possible at all without the efforts, and I have to stop here and say this, of Steve Lefford and County Maintenance, who have been incredibly responsive to our needs at the school. We'd, we'd be shut down without them. Also, without the work of our community volunteers who clean, paint, mow, set up for, and work at these events, we simply wouldn't be able to function at the center. We can't say enough to our volunteers who have given over 1,100 hours per year to the Heritage Center, greatly reducing the money necessary for its day-to-day -day operation. Additionally, the Heritage Center has worked very hard to enlist the help of various organizations to support events at the center. These are just some of the organizations we have partnered with so far. The groups that you see popping up with an asterisk have issued monetary grants to the Heritage Center totaling $117,100. These grants have been instrumental in upgrading the facility to accommodate the concert series and other events. So what lies ahead for the Heritage Center? Well, next up will be the Smoky Mountain Relay, a 212-mile relay run through the mountains from Transylvania County to the Nanahale Outdoor Center. Cowie School is an exchange site for the relay. Cowie Community Development Organization will be serving breakfast for nearly 200 of the participants, and dozens of racers will be camping at the school awaiting their turn to run. I will not be But you are invited to come eat breakfast. After a lot of hard work and some serious volunteer hours, I'm going to point you ladies on that hiking. <laughs> After a lot of hard work and some serious volunteer hours, our kitchen has been certified for use by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. We've already been approached by the North Carolina Extension Service to use the kitchen for some food classes 
And we are currently in discussions with several commercial users who we hope will rent the kitchen to create their products, generating not only revenue for the school, but also jobs. The Pottery School will complete its expansion into a second room this year, increasing the capacity for an enterprise that's already bursting at the seams. We are extremely pleased to welcome the Folk Heritage Association of Macon County to this year's Cowie Celebration. We think the combined efforts of these two groups will make it one of the best heritage festivals in the region. In addition, Folk Heritage plans to bring additional demonstrators to the school on concert nights. We encourage concert patrons, after you buy your tickets you'll be one of those, we encourage concert patrons to come early, view the heritage presentations, eat dinner on the grounds, and then enjoy a great evening of music. The center is currently open for at least a portion of each day, seven days a week, to support ongoing activities and classes. But it's not a regular thing, it's when our tenants happen to be there. This summer, with the help of volunteers and board members, we hope to establish a regular system of hours so that the school we open, people will know it's open and they can come visit it at those hours. We think this will be a big step in making the center a heritage destination for visitors to Macon County. In closing, I'd like to read a message from one of our art students. And she actually wrote this to you, but she sent it to me, and so I'm going to read it to you. Hazel, North Carolina is our home for five years now. In retirement, we have found the North Carolina mountains to offer the best of all worlds in its scenic beauty, activities, and economy. At least once a week, I round up several fellow retirees from Murphy, Hiawassee, Peachtree, and drive to the Cowie School for oil painting lessons with John Hoagland. Often we come early to enjoy lunch at Cafe Rail or other restaurants, and we can stop before going home for groceries and other shopping that is not available in our area. We take in nature's beauty in the drive over and back and really appreciate what you are doing at the Cowie School for the love of art. You have begun something there that is appreciated not only by those using the facilities, but also for local businesses who benefit from the extra dollars spent in your lovely city. Know that your investment in this facility has immediate short-term gain for your community and huge potential for long-term benefit. Thank you, Bobby Mace. Gentlemen, that's the goal of the Heritage Center at Cowie School, to make a real difference in the lives of real people as they experience traditional mountain heritage. So whatever your interest may be, whether it's bluegrass, pottery and crafts, quilts, clogging, weaving, or just standing around eating and having fun, whether you're young or just young at heart, we invite you and all Maconians to join us at your Heritage Center at the Old Cowie School. Because as the kids who graduated from there on the last class said, Cowie School really does rock. No. And that's one, if you can go back, you go all the way back to Teresa's, to the original weaving class. Yeah. Well, I think there's something out of the folks in attendance that don't know, and this board probably don't know. Would you like me to speak on that? We'll get there in a second. Would you like me to speak Teresa, on that? Yeah. yeah. She's right here, Teresa. I've had the privilege to work with... If you uh, see, let me introduce this. See the young man at the bottom in the red. Oh. And Teresa, I want to tell you about this young man. I had the privilege of being there when Teresa was working with him. And uh, she can tell you the story real quickly. But it is at, if nothing else, in the school, Bobby, if nothing else, what this young man has accomplished because of the school being there is absolutely amazing. I think you both think you that. Well, his mother was doing the farmer's market on a Tuesday, and I had the school open because I had lessons going on a Tuesday, and he came in a couple of times. Now, Nash is extremely autistic, and he does not speak, but he made it very clear he wanted to weave. Now, I have a loom in there. In fact, Gary Shields has woven on it. Quite a few of Kevin Hubbard has woven on it. So he sat down and immediately took to it. He took to it so fast, I spent an hour making four bobbins to fill so he could actually weave. So my dad, who was one of the pictures in the older picture that with my parents next to the coverlet, they were the ones that donated the looms for the large looms in there. And my dad said, well, why don't you put on a rug for him? So we wound 10 yards of warp to put on the loom, which takes quite a bit of time, put it on. He was weaving six feet in an hour. <laughs> now, just to give you some observation, I spent all summer weaving three yards, and if you weave 10 inches in an hour, that's considered doing pretty good. 
he was weaving six feet an hour. And what he's doing in that picture is cutting off the 10 yards of warp that was finished so he could actually give six rods to his family for Christmas, and one which will be entered into a competition, I think, for autistic kids. And my father, with his heavy duty uh, parachute sewing machine, was able to turn the edges and sew it so that they were doing that. So it's not just Nash. I've had some Down syndrome uh, people come through. So I'm willing to operate on weird hours because I still have, um, I can tell people I have three businesses and a job. Um, <laughs> but my room is dedicated to when you need it. And, um, and if it is needed on a weird time or just one-on-one, -on -one, then I'm there for you. She's not kidding because there's been many times I've wanted to go out and check something at the school and didn't want to mess with the, with the system. I was always glad to see <laughs> Teresa's car there so I knew I could get in and get out without having to set the code. But uh, so they really do. And uh, that's, that's the presentation. We cannot thank you enough. Would not have been possible without the five gentlemen sitting up there. And, and uh, we just want to say thank you. We would, you you've invested a lot in us and we want to give you a stop over here. Mm -hmm. But to y'all doing the work, uh, it just did over our field. Mm -hmm. so, these guys back here, they're all back here. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I can't overestimate, we only put it in one slide, but we are so excited to be partnering up with Folk Heritage this year. We just think that the synergy there and the ability of those two groups to work together, I, I think if you miss the Cowboy Celebration on August the 15th, I think you're missing it. I think you're missing that. So when I said circle it, I mean it. It'll be soon this Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, good job. I'll hold you. 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 I'll hold you